Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do problems that relate to the digestive system. Let's go ahead and get started. Problem one says, which of the following associations correctly matches a gastric cell with a compound it secretes? A says G cells to hydrochloric acid, B says chief cells to pepsinogen, C says parietal cells to alkaline mucus, and D says mucus cells to intrinsic factor. Now, chief cells secrete pepsinogen, which is a protease secreted as a zymogen that is activated by the acidic environment of the stomach. All right, so that is a correct association right there. Now, G cells, they secrete not hydrochloric acid, they secrete gastrin. All right, parietal cells, they secrete hydrochloric acid. All right, and then mucus cells, they secrete alkaline mucus all right so that's why those other three are incorrect all right the correct answer for one is b chief cells do indeed secrete pepsinogen beautiful two says which of the following is not part of the small intestine so the small intestine has three parts it's divided into three sections the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum all right, so that's A, C, and D. Those are the three sections of the small intestine. The cecium is part of the large intestine, not the small intestine. So the answer to two will be B. Fantastic. Three says in an experiment, enteropeptidase secretion was blocked. As a direct result, levels of all of the following active enzymes would likely to be affected except... A says trypsin, B says aminopeptidase, C says chymotrypsin, and D says carboxypeptidase A. All right, so aminopeptidase, this is a brush border peptidase that's secreted by the cells lining the duodenum. It does not require enteropeptidase for activation, all right, which is why the answer is going to be B. All of the other active enzymes are going to be affected except aminopeptidase because it does not require enteropeptidase for activation. Now, both trypsin, all right, and uh, both trypsin, uh, trypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase A and B are activated by enteropeptidase. And so that eliminates answer choice A and D because they would both be affected. Uh, once activated, trypsin can activate uh, chymotrypsinogen. If trypsinogen cannot be activated, then chymotrypsinogen will not be activated either. So it would also affect chymotrypsin. So these three enzymes, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase A, are all going to be affected All right, when enteropeptidase secretion is blocked. The only one that will not is going to be aminopeptidase. So the correct answer for three is B. Beautiful. Four says, which of the following incorrectly pairs a digestive hormone with its function? A says trypsin hydroly uh, hydrolyzes specific peptide bonds. Lactase hydrolyzes lactose to glucose and galactose. C says pancreatic amylase hydrolyzes starch to maltose. And D says lipase emulsifies uh, uh, emulsifies fats we're trying to follow we're trying to find a pair that's incorrect all right so let's go through these answer lipase is involved in the digestion of fats all right so going down from the bottom it is in involved in the digestion of fats but its function is not to emulsify fats that is actually the job of bile so this is an incorrect pair everything else is correct all right trypsin does hydrolyze specific peptide bonds lactase does hydrolyze lactose to glucose and galactose and pancreatic amylase does hydrolyze starch to maltose all right fantastic now what lipase actually does is this it chemically digests fat in the duodenum allowing them to be brought into the duodenal cells and packaged into chylomicrons all right so it does not emulsify fats. That is the bile's job. Four is D. Awesome. Let's go to five. 
Five says, which of the following correctly lists two organs in which proteins are digested? A says mouth and stomach. B says stomach and small intestine. C says stomach and small intestine. Sorry, B says stomach and large intestine. And C says stomach and small intestine. And then D says small and large intestine. All right, so protein digestion begins in the stomach where pepsin is going to hydrolyze specific peptide bonds. Protein digestion is going to continue in the small intestine where you're going to have trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidases, aminopeptidase, and dipeptidase all hydrolyze specific parts of the peptide. Now, what you should know is that no protein digestion occurs in the mouth or in the large intestine, only the stomach and the small intestine. And so the correct answer here is going to be C. Beautiful. Six says, which of the following choices incorrectly pairs a digestive enzyme with its site of secretion? All right. Sucrase, salivary glands. All right. Sucrase is a brush border enzyme that's found on duodenal cells. It's not secreted by the salivary glands. All right. This enzyme hydrolyzes sucrose to form glucose and fructose. All right. So this is an incorrect pairing. Now, if we look at B, carboxypeptidase in the pancreas, that is correct. C says trypsin in the pancreas, also correct. And D says lactase in the duodenum, also correct. So the only incorrect pairing here is going to be A. So 6 is A. 7 says a 2-week-old male infant is brought to the emergency room. His mother reports that he has been unable to keep any milk down. Shortly after he nurses, he has sudden projectile vomiting. During exam, an olive-shaped mass can be felt in his upper abdomen. It is determined that there is a constriction in the digestive system that prevents food from reaching the small intestine from the stomach. What structure is most likely the site of the problem? Is it the cardiac sphincter? Is it the pyloric sphincter? Is it the uh, ileocecal valve? Is it the internal anal sphincter? Well, this question is basically asking us to identify the structure that is going to lie between the stomach and the small intestine. This is the pyloric sphincter. Now, the presentation given in this question is a classic example of what is called pyloric stenosis, in which the pyloric sphincter is thickened, and so it cannot relax to, perm to permit chime through. All right, so the correct answer here is going to be B. Now, the cardiac sphincter in answer choice A, this lies between the esophagus and the stomach, um, answer choice C, this lies between the ileum of the small intestine and the cecum of the large intestine. And then the internal anal sphincter lies at the end of the rectum. So that's why none of these are the correct answer choices. All right, seven is B. Eight says many medications have uh, uh, anticholinergic uh, side effects. I'm so sorry for butchering that which block the activity of parasympathetic neurons throughout the body. Older individuals may be on many, many such medications simultaneously, um, which could exasperate the side effects. Which of the following would not be expected in an individual taking this medication or medication with this activity? All right, so... A says dry mouth, B says diarrhea, C says slow gastric emptying, and D says decreased gastric acid production. Cool. So the parasympathetic nervous system, it has many roles in the digestive system. And one of those roles is it, could prom it promotes the motility of the gut tube and secretion from glands. And so blocking the parasympathetic nervous system would likely result in dry mouth, all right, obviously from the reduced secretion of saliva. It would result in slow gastric emptying from the decreased peristalsis, and it could also result in decreased gastric acid production based off of the reduced hydrochloric acid secretion from the parietal cells in the gastric glands. And so dry mouth, slow gastric emptying, and decreased gastric acid production are all expected um, in, in, a, in an individual that's taking this medication. 
all right? What wouldn't be expected would be diarrhea. So the answer for eight is going to be B, all right? And this is the correct answer because we would be more likely to expect constipation in such an individual, not diarrhea, right? And this is from the idea that slowed motil motility through the colon will lead to increased water absorption, and that would make the feces too firm, and that would cause constipation. All right, so the correct answer for eight is B. Nine says the two graphs below show the relative activity of two enzymes in solution of varying pHs. Which of the following choices correctly identifies the two enzymes? So for the first graph, this enzyme's activity seems to be the most at low pHs, and for this one at higher pHs. So this works in acidic environments or, or conditions, and this works in basic conditions. All right. So in short, the first graph shows maximal activity at a very acidic pH, implying that this is probably an enzyme acting in the stomach. The second graph shows maximal activity, all right, around eight or nine, like right about here, maybe in between, all right, implying that this enzyme um, works in basic conditions, all right, this is most likely an enzyme that's acting in the duodenum. All right. And so looking at these answer choices, all right. A says one uh, chymotrypsin, two pepsin. B says one pepsin, two carboxypeptidase B. C says one lactase, two aminopeptidase. And D says one enteropeptidase. And the second is amylase. So we said that the first graph is going to be in the stomach, relates to probably um an enzyme in the stomach and the second graph relates to an enzyme that's probably in the duodenum all right so we're trying to pick an answer choice where the, the we're choosing the right enzyme all right that would be in the stomach and the right enzyme that would be in the duodenum so the only choice that matches the first graph with a stomach enzyme pepsin and the second with a, a duodenal enzyme carboxy peptidase B is going to be answer choice B. Pepsin is found in the stomach and carboxypeptidase B is found in the small intestine, in the duodenum specifically. All right. So the correct answer for nine is B. 10 says, which of the following would not likely lead to elevated levels of bilirubin in the blood? A says, uh, cholangia carcinoma, a cancer of the bile ducts that can ultimately lead to full occlusion of the duct lumen. Autoimmune uh, hemolytic anemia, a disease in which the red blood cells are attacked by antibodies and are lysed. Uh, Mintrier's disease in which rug thickens and overlapping glands lose their secre uh, secretory ability, secretory ability, and D says acetaminophen overdose in which the accumulation of toxic metabolites can cause rapid liver failure. We're trying to pick which would not likely lead to elevated levels of bilirubin in the blood. So let's think about this. Elevated bilirubin implies that there is a blockage to the bile flow. All right. Increased production of bilirubin or the inability of the liver to produce bile. Now, if the bile duct was were occluded, like we see in answer choice A, then bile would not be able to flow into the digestive tract and would build up, increasing the bilirubin levels in the blood. All right? So A is a viable answer. All right, a viable answer here. B, all right, well, if many blood cells were lysed, then bilirubin levels would rise in accordance with the increased hemoglobin release. All right, so B is also a viable answer here. All right, it could likely lead to elevated levels of bilirubin in the blood. All right, and then if we look at answer choice D, if liver failure occurred, then it would be unable to produce bile and bilirubin would again build up. So again, another viable answer is D. C is what is not likely going to lead to elevated levels of bilirubin in the blood. Why? Well, in answer choice C, it refers to the pathology in the stomach. And the key word here is this word right here. All right. 
it's the folds in the stomach wall. That's what ragai is. Now, lack of gastric function would have no effect on bile rubin levels. And that's why this answer choice is the correct answer choice here. So 10 is C. 11 says, which of the following correctly pairs the molecule with its primary site of absorption? A says chylomicrons in the lacteals. B says amino acids in the large intestine. C says vitamin A and E in the stomach. And D says cholesterol in the ascending colon. So chylomicrons contain triacyl glycerols, cholesterol, esters, and fat-soluble vitamins. And they are secreted by intestinal cells into lacteals. All right. So that is a correct pairing of the molecule with its primary site of absorption. All right, the other ones here, amino acids, fat-soluble vitamins like A and E, and cholesterol, they are all absorbed in the small intestine. All right, in the small intestine. So the correct answer here is going to be A. That's the only correct pair of the molecule with its primary source site of absorption. 11 is A. 12 says starch is hydrolyzed into maltose by enzymes from one, the saliv uh, salivary glands, two, brush border, or three, pancreas. Okay, let's talk about this. Starch is hydrolyzed to maltose by two enzymes. That's going to be the salivary amylase, which is secreted by the salivary glands in the mouth, all right, and pancreatic amylase, which is uh, secreted by the pancreas in the duodenum. All right, so that's one and three. That is correct. Brush border disaccharidases can further break down maltose, but they do not break down starch. All right, so not brush border enzymes. Only one, salivary glands, and three, pancreas, is where starch is hydrolyzed into maltose. All right, that means the correct answer here is going to be B. Fantastic. 13 says, which of the following biomolecules does not drain to the liver before arriving at the right side of the heart? Okay. A says vitamin D, B says an amino acid, C says fructose, a monosaccharide, and D says vitamin B5. Okay, while the capillaries from the intestine come together to form the portal vein, which drains to the liver, the lacteals come together to form the thoracic duct, which drains directly into the left subclavian vein. Therefore, fat-soluble compounds do not pass through the liver before reaching the right heart. All right? And only choice A, vitamin D, is fat-soluble. So it's going to be answer choice A. All right? The biomolecule that does not drain to the liver before arriving at the right side of the heart is going to be vitamin D. Beautiful. That looks like the last question I have. All right. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.